17 years, Evening Magazine has traveled to the ends of the earth to bring you stories of triumph and inspiration. Now I've got enough about that. Here's what you really want to see. Surprise! The moments that humiliated, shamed, and embarrassed us. Tonight, four teams will compete to become the number one crosstown rival in Seattle. Moments like crosstown rivals. Andre Boroshkov shooting at Laura Sigurdsson, and there's Laura's face. Back in 1988, Evening's producers came up with an innovative survivor-style contest, pitting Western Washington neighborhoods against each other. On Wednesday, Federal Way claimed top honors over Highline. The series culminated in a live championship broadcast presented by original hosts Brian Tracy and Penny Legate. Photographer Tom Volk was enlisted as a referee. It was amazing. I mean, there were big lighting grids and multiple camera people, and it was just this huge endeavor. Only problem was, nobody cared. Oh, it was really depressing. It was really depressing. I couldn't believe how low the numbers were. We just kept looking at the rating sheet and going, our jobs. Okay, Crosstown well, Rivals was one of the most expensive and least watched shows we ever broadcast. Can you believe it? I mean, this is probably the fastest half hour that we've ever spent. Unbelievable. It just bombed. <laughs> hey, put me on TV here. In 1992, we followed the local audition for Studs, a game show featuring bachelors vying for the affection of an eligible woman. I wasn't interested in his bottom lip, I was interested in his tongue. Just before our story aired, this bachelor called to tell us he'd been chosen to appear on Studs. Many girls tell me because of my eyelashes, I have long eyelashes and they like that. He even gave us details about his upcoming trip to Hollywood. We passed the good news along to our viewers, one of whom was the eligible bachelor's very surprised wife. Why do I think I'm a stud? Um, probably because I'm honest with people. Turns out the non-bachelor was also a non-stud, never actually selected for the game show. We'd been duped. Come back, I love you. When John Curley came along to host Evening Magazine in 1994, this camera-shy staffer began to worry. And he had this green and red suit that he, he looked like the green giant, but real skinny, and this little skinny little mask. I think he wore a mask. And he, it was like he had just been here like a week or two, and as I remember. And he's doing, running around in the hallways in this thing. And I'm, I'm thinking, man, we're in trouble. There was cause for concern. Random Acts of Kindness Man had arrived. I'm Random Acts of Kindness Man. You are pregnant. At first, it was funny. An alter ego do-gooder waltzing across the Northwest just to make people feel good. I'm Random Acts of Kindness Man. You must be Mr. Rosenberg. Yeah, yes, I am. But photographer Daryl Benedict says Random Acts of Kindness Man began to change. He kind of started morphing and his voice began to change and he started developing these kind of facial tics. Hey, Pat, look over there for a second. Eventually, the character wore out his welcome. Let's go back! And I think the thing that was sort of his nail in his coffin was the time uh, Random Acts of Kindness Man decided he was going to go undercover. <laughs> <laughs> we put we put a, a a camera on top of a helmet and covered the, the helmet with hair. Thank you. I'm Bob Livingston. I'm in, I'm a stockbroker. How are you? Okay. At that point, my boss came in and said, "You know, I don't even know what this character is supposed to be anymore. You started out doing nice things for people, and now you're just weird." In a final random act of kindness, this superhero was never heard from again. Daryl suspects a conspiracy. You know, I think I can sum up the reason Random Acts of Kindness Man was done away with in one word, homophobia. <laughs> there were other moments of discomfort for us and our viewers, like the time John played an evil waiter, serving some very happy, happy hour customers. I was supposed to be obnoxious, but I was nothing as obnoxious as they were. And I mean, they even threw food at me. What a cramp I had in my hand. Yeah, that's all right. But the whole nine yards, yeah. And there have been some humiliations you never saw, like our interview with Bruce Willis, during which he felt he'd been upstaged by his co-star. Willis got a hold of the tape before we could and had it destroyed. There was the time a wrong phone number lost us an interview with Jay Leno. Let's go to Boston. Thank you, Seattle. 
and the time one of us flew to Los Angeles for an interview with Kevin Costner. One day late. Misses was actually a noble attempt to raise money for charity. An attempted world record for the most water skiers behind a single boat. Well, what do you think, John? You ready? I'm ready. Blow it up like this. We've been shooting it uh, for about almost a month, I think, building up to it. Photographer Tim Jensen spent a very long day waiting for the stunt to get up to speed. But then the thing started pulling and you could just tell something wasn't right. We were dragging and then they said, here we go, hit it! And nothing, nothing, just a big explosion of black smoke. Maybe next time. Yes, our first 17 years have been fraught with error. But we hope you'll stick with us for many years to come. After all, our future failures will be fun to watch.